good evening friends so we are welcoming you for the eighth another episode of facebook live of pharma do your talks this is shanno sundram and uh, dr satish so today's topic is going to be on uh, pharma research so i'll be starting my research career then dr satish will be taking talking taking over it and we are also a young researcher on the board for the as a guest for this particular show so hope you all enjoy this and it's a very it will be useful for the researchers especially who is trying to publish uh, journals especially in uh, scopus index or ugc care type of journals all those things are going to be there and at the end of the show uh, last 10 minutes we'll be showing a live presentation or live search of the how we are going to how the viewers can search or a researcher can search a journal in scopus uh, so watch till end of the show so that is for the day this will be the protocol of the day what you are going to do so uh, to start with i started my research you may, many may not believe i start my research in the say first year of my b form because in now now uh, in current era many students are doing the research even in ug first year or second year but in those days we go back to 25 years back in 1996 because i was a first year b form student that time since my father was a librarian i came with an offer that there is an association called indian association of biomedical scientists and they are giving some uh, ug research awards and uh, encouraging paramedical students the name of the award is ps lalita award so ps lalita was a veterinarian who was working in a uh, madras veterinary college and she has uh, initiated the award and uh, award was given by indian association of biomedical scientists it is iabms association so i asked my father i don't know how to do research what is research how can i do this and how can i do all those things in that case uh, my father introduced me that time to my mentor dr venkatraman sir the uh, venkatraman sir gave me a very small topic called as uh, evaluate the base oil base in neeli bringadi thailam he has given me three marketed products of uh, neeli bringadi thailam and uh, told me to evaluate the coconut oil base the quality of the coconut oil base so and uh, actually you uh, our, my professor was in uh, tie up with medimix company so he introduced me to go there and evaluate all these things and introduced me to medic that time medic medimix lab was there in ananagar so i every day after college i used to go to 4 4:30 or 5 i go to that lab i work till 9 o'clock this i did for 3 months then after 3 months i made a report and i submitted to my professor professor corrected everything so I just gave the results and professor drafted me for uh, how to draft it help me in all those things then we submitted for that uh, award category unfortunately my paper was selected and uh, and it was not only selecting is important that paper has to be presented in the conference in front of a very big audience so i was actually afraid how to do it i, I don't because uh, though i was uh, going for oratorical competitions everything in my school days i am a good orator but to face a first paper presentation i don't know how to proceed with it that to it was slide projection and slide projector and not a ohp thing first time i am seeing slides so nowadays all these are for the young students is available in the fingertips in mobiles and everything everyone can do whatever they like and the youngsters are doing wonderful presentations nowadays but in those days if you think what is a slide and what is a slide projector so uh, we don't know how to make the slides it will be like a konica flame will be made and that there will be a casket of uh, in the casket the film will be pasted and one one slide will be posted on the projector and the person will be operating on the projector one one slide will be done and if you place the slide in the wrong direction the slide will be projected on upside down manner so all this will be there so fortunately my one of my father's friend who was anatomy professor mr mutusami who was very good in making he made us slides and we made 10 slides for my project and he made uh, all the slides in konica flame and made it in a casket and gave it to me as slides so and that's in those days preparing one slide is 50 rupees you imagine in uh, 1996 50 rupees for one slide and i prepared 10 slides 500 rupees we spent for the slide preparation then uh, we practice everything to practice that uh, my father because uh, to because uh, nowadays everyone is having color mic invisible mics bluetooth mics to present but in those days we had to hold a hand mic in, in the big stage and they had to present our voice and everything should be audible and we should not see the slides 
so all this my father what he did is each and every slide content he made it as a chart making so 10 slides 10 charts he made and pasted on the wall so he gave me the mathukattan tamil la solluvom it's a blender wooden blender which he used to make for kira and uh, dal preparations so he gave me the blender in my hand to imagine that to be a mic and he um, asked me to paste uh, every slide he'll be pulling one by one down and i need to talk using that uh, blender so that was the uh, first preparation my father made me to present on a paper presentation and every time my father tells me whatever presentation still till today if you go for a presentation that do for a whole presentation in the stage you stand before a mirror and speak for five minutes or three minutes so you can observe your body language not only your vocational skills are important your body skills are also important you will be judged by your personality so this is why i'm telling you so for the young students and young researchers who are going for presentations for open presentations you not only take care of your uh, oration skills you take care of your body skills body languages so that all this will be monitored by the audience so that is what this is how i took my practice and successfully i've done multiple uh, presentations unfortunately i got a ps lalita award was the initiative for me because getting award at the young age motivated me to do more research and other things then in I, IABM itself, I got PG, IBM MS award and Agathya award, tier four awards. And again, my guide or mentor was uh, made me to stand in front of 1,500 audience in, uh, uh, two th I think it is in 2000, because it was an Ayurveda conference. And uh, he made me to defend that one of the uh, Ayurvedic product is defective. I don't want to stay whatever it is now, but in front of a 1,500 Ayurvedic physicians, I am defending that the particular product is defective so and everyone was shooting me like questions still i remember it was in that uh, big memorial hall in chennai in tenambet so kalaiwana rarangam so 1500 audience as a pg student i am shaking my head legs but still i am able to answer to that because my preparation both by my mentor and my father for doing that and successfully i got a second prize called as kk pushottaman uh, memorial award they gave me a cash prize out of which to make a remembrance, my father made that prize money to a ring. So one gram, one, uh, sorry, four grams of uh, ring and still I have the ring with me. So that was the award prize money which I used. So all these are my motivation factors in my childhood, in my college days to come as a very good researcher. Then I started uh, after my, P my PG dissertations and PhD, pub I started a lot of publications to my credit now i have nearly 160 publications and my h index in google scholar is 11 and in scopus it's around eight so my item index is 10 so all these are the ranking factors for the researcher so and my, i have completed nearly uh, seven uh, phd scholars and still nine phd scholars are under my guidance and recently also two or three scholars have submitted their thesis so this is my research background so once i Actually, when I became an academician, once I stepped into academics, my father first told me, since PS Delta Award was a motivation factor in your life to become a good researcher. So what I, what do you think is, whenever you should also motivate your student, just to, you should be like your mentor, Venkatraman sir. You should pull out some good students and uh, make them uh, do research. And you should make them uh, do PS you should get many APS Lalita awards to many students and PJPMS awards and many awards and make many students to present not only the guide dissertation to make presentations. So when I stepped into Wales University, uh, that time it was Wales College of Pharmacy in um, 2005. I, when I stepped into Wales College of Pharmacy, uh, at that time I was not aware of many of the students, um, but uh, I asked Professor Vijayan Dina, who is a uh, HOD of chemistry in the same university now, uh, she helped uh, she helped me out uh, to find out some good students for my first ps lalita award and uh, i was successful in getting my student that also i now i have guided many ps lalita my many of my ps lalita students have got ps lalita award ps pj famous awards and uh, the professor satish and professor vijayani madam also guided many students for that so that not only myself guiding to that i make my pro friends and professors do that aspects and they are also doing wonderful job so they are getting a lot of students they are doing making students present in a lot of conferences this is how we motivate the students to do publications paper presentations oral and poster presentations so 
that is my research uh, career and uh, it's going research journey is going on well now i switch over to dr sadish kumar sir to talk about his uh, research concept then we'll introduce the speaker of the day that's it sadish sir your mic is in mute good evening friends uh very happy to meet you in all this uh, beautiful evening of uh, the sunday today's episode is uh, totally for uh, dedicated for the young researchers as already dr shamusundram told motivation is the basic for doing a research whatever knowledge you have whatever skills you have somebody should motivate you somebody should guide you somebody somebody should activate you to do the research then only you can become a successful researcher a facilitator in short a facilitator is required for making the research career successful that is my basic idea regarding this uh, uh, research and uh, the basic thing what uh, i want to say about the research for the youngsters is first we should know what is available or what is readily available in the society and based upon that assessment only we have to go for the new thing research is a seed for innovation you know research starts there somewhere and you will move on to the innovation finally the end product of research may be a innovation not all researches may lead to innovations but in one way or other way it will help you to get new innovative products new innovative ideas new innovative uh, pathways we can find so all these indicate that there is a possibility of getting an innovation at the end of the research so we should always start the research by doing some survey we should know what already has been carried out what already exists what uh, data is already prepared and by the uh, previous scientists that we should clearly understand and then we should find out what is the need for further action what type of action we have to take and go forward so uh, what i mean is you should compulsorily have a glance at the literatures what already available and these literatures should build the flat platform for further research so uh, with this idea i want to say something about my research also how uh, how i started my uh, research and publication already in the previous episode i had told that the seed for my research the seed for my research started with uh, my mpharm second year that is my uh, mpharm guide dr uh, rukmani madam had uh, given a uh, article to me which is uh, titled as nanoparticle a novel drug delivery system so on seeing that uh, uh, that was the first time i'm hearing the word nanoparticle itself previously we are uh, very familiar with microparticles and a very simple thing we will read that nanotechnology is uh, the order of the day like that we will read but when i got that paper and uh, read it i understood that there is a lot of things that we can do and my guide told at the time we should always take a trendy uh, topic for research we should not take the old uh, thing for research old topics which is uh, very much explored such, such type of topics we can avoid for research there is no nothing that we should not do that but it is easy if you a new thing is adopted for research then uh, it will be very useful for you and very easier for you to move forward okay so as per her guidance i took uh, nanoparticles uh, for research and uh, uh i am the only person moving away from the normal uh, drug delivery system like tablets capsules and uh, suppositories most of my batchmates are doing with that thing and i faced lot of hurdles because lot of uh, facilities are required for preparing nanoparticles you may know the sony gator is required and the uh, cooling centrifuge lot and lot of things are required for preparing nanoparticles uh, basic nanoparticles i'm talking about uh, 20 years back so in that stage of preparing a nanoparticles was a very tough part for me so uh, that uh, nanoparticles i successfully prepared and uh, produced all the results to the guide 
and she told now you should go for publication i am very much shocked what is this publication what why you prepared very well and uh, got the results why should we publish it uh, what she is saying i'm a uh, little bit confused then she told that on that day i given one paper for you which is an starting point for you and you uh, collect a lot of literatures the literatures are all such publications if you publish and you communicate to the uh, people then only uh, uh, others know that we had data work and such and such result we got so uh, she emphasized the importance of publication otherwise i might not have published on that stage so at the end of my second year m farm i communicated the paper to an international journal called journal of pharmacology pharmacy and pharmacology and uh, there was an italian based journal and uh, i heard that most of the, the uh, articles in that uh, journals will be of uh, from foreign authors only few papers will be communicated from india so anyhow uh, my uh, as per the instruction of my guide i communicated the article to the uh, journal uh, that is having a uh, good impact factor also i am not aware of that impact factor at all at that point of time uh, but uh, now i understand that how much important that impact factor is so uh, i uh, communicated the paper and within uh, six months i got the reply by the meantime i had joined as a lecturer in some college and uh, working so uh, i got the communication back to the uh, old uh, institution where i did my uh, m farm and uh, my guide had called me and told that uh, your paper has been uh, 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 returned for a small revisions we have to make some smaller corrections uh, there is one or two english editing is required and a few spelling mistakes are identified you have to correct all those things and you have to send it so i again met the guide and met the guide and mailed, made the corrections and communicated back to the journal so that was my first publication so uh, why i am saying about the first publication the first publication is an international publication i don't know that uh, there are so many journals in india at that time but only few journals i know that uh, indian journal of pharmaceutical uh, indian journal of uh, uh, pharmacy or like that few a few journals i know but uh, i could not have, uh, have an, a clear idea that how many journals are there and uh, how to publish in those indian journals but uh, later stage i understood that it is very easy to publish in indian journals than international journals because you know uh, in international communication on those days it will be going by air mail the cost of the air mail is very high if you have to send an uh, communication it will take around uh, 200 rupees uh, of one bundle of uh, uh, manuscript and again it comes for revision again we have to send it back so normal travel uh, that is a uh, uh, delivery time for a uh, air mile is around uh, uh, 15 to 20 days so this itself was a big uh, uh, barrier for uh, most of the publishers in international journals at that point of time but now you know if you communicate at uh, 5 pm it will be available at the 5.01 pm in their hands in their email box so that much of communication has developed technology has developed so there is a big boom for the researchers and uh, after that after joining in my job i had made uh, started doing my own research my own research is based on whatever the ideas conceived during my research period so what i want to insist here is whenever you people youngsters are doing a research you have to purely involve in that research then only you can become a guide after becoming a, a teacher i want to guide so much of students for b farm itself there is a project and i am given with uh, five students i am provided with five students and i am committed to do a very good work for them i have to give a very good concept for them as my guide in my m farm given for me i have to give a very good work for them otherwise uh, uh, i am not uh, completing my uh, duty is it or not so that i understood and i given a good work and that way i slowly moved into the research and at that time itself i decided that we should further do research and earn phd that was my i decided at that point of time itself that the search is essential and we should carry out the research and get the phd degree so with this uh, i conclude that uh, 
this part and over to Dr. Shanmu Sundaram. And we have uh, the guest is also waiting on the other side. So I don't want to take much time. Over to Dr. Shanmu Sundaram. I think it's time to introduce our guest for the day. It's Dr. Praveen, uh, who was a Fondy student in Wales and currently is a research scholar uh, doing his uh, research after Fondy in Wales under the guidance of Dr. Vijayanandi. So, and uh, so you may be thinking oh, why we are invited such an English research scholar. Because the scholar has uh, nearly 50 plus publications in uh, Scopus Index Journal and uh, he has got uh, three or four uh, awards. So it is better to listen from the mouth of the scholar itself so that it will be uh, inspiration and motivation from the other young researchers who is watching and who is going to watch. And uh, one more thing, again, I need to thank the subscribers, the viewers of this channel because uh, last Facebook Live also nearly 800 to 900 views. And uh, and uh, we have, since uh, many are requesting to be on the YouTube also to see it on the later version. So we are posting this on Nikit's Edu Plus YouTube channel. So in that also last episode has crossed nearly 350 views. So if you want in later episode, if you want to not, if you don't find time to watch in Facebook Live, you can watch in the YouTube channel. So this video will be posted every day, maybe in the night or next day it will be posted. So that way you can see the channel. And to start with Mr. Dr. Praveen. So Praveen, let introduce yourself and uh, self intro will be better than what we intro. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me on your show. I am really honored to be a part of it. I am Praveen. I have completed my farm day in 2017. Right now, I am a research scholar at School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, the Wales University, under the guidance of Dr. Vijay. So, so how is your, uh, how, in what way you thought of joining farm day in 2010? Because 2008 only PSA has introduced farm day course in India. So, you in 2011, you joined farm day. So, how was your experience that time in, and now now what is your experience? Sir, so my journey in family is quite similar to your journey. Uh, my goal in my childhood was to pursue medicine, but uh, unfortunately I fell short of it uh, by a few months. So then I have got my got my dental seat in, uh, and I have been invited for dental counseling. Uh, but uh, I, I, my interest is more towards uh, studying something that deals with the uh, entire system, entire human system. So then I took my admission over here and uh, on August 3rd, I think uh, we have our university open. That day I received a counseling letter from Tamil Nadu MGR Medical University for our dentistry. So I was very confused, even my parents were uh, confused, but they were too, uh, too supportive of me. They told uh, uh, they are ready to support me in whatever decision I take. So in a confusion, I didn't know what to do. So that time, uh, the next day, August 4th, uh, uh, the first working day for me in Fandi. After the classes got over, I went and met uh, Vijayanandi. She's my guide now. I went and met her that day and I told her, like, I have been invited for dental counseling. And uh, what should I do, ma'am? I, I have a little idea whether I should continue with Fandi or whether I should go with the dental counseling. So Vijayanandi, ma'am, then explained me about uh, both the courses. And she told me that uh, if I continue doing Fandi, I will do well. So I went home, I told my parents that ma'am told like this, that I will do well if I continue doing farm D. Then uh, I, I didn't go attend the dental counseling, I just uh, continued, continued on with farm D. So nine years later, I think I have made the right decision and uh, I'm happy about uh, what I have done. So my next question is, uh, um, so many students are, because farm D itself is a PG course, right? So many are, it's because a long six years. Everyone to be a B farm for four years, that itself is a big journey. But farm D is a big journey of six years, continuous uh, six years. After that, many students have thought of, will be going for uh, direct jobs and thinking of working as clinical pharmacists or in hospitals and uh, they want to be with the patients. So because everyone has the intention to treat the patient, so and, uh, sorry, to be with the patient and associated with the doctors and other things. So. How come you start up going for higher studies? That is to direct to PhD enrollment and be a research scholar. In what way you Sir, get for you? Well, in the time I started my PhD, there were very few students, handful of students would have who would have uh, continued family and doing PhD. Uh, the thing is, sir, uh, I have got uh, interest towards research uh, to do research. 
and uh, always i had the constant support and motivation from my guide vijayanandam and uh, so i thought uh, continuing doing this research will give me more uh, scope towards uh, uh, making my career towards uh, research fields so myself and uh, one of my friend both of us joined uh, doing a phd in okay now uh, thank you dr satish sir to interact with you regarding your research your first publication your first award and so on so interact with dr satish hello dr praveen hello sir uh, i hope uh, uh, you will be enjoying this show uh, by sharing your experiences with us okay sure, sir. expect the uh, same with the audience also uh, my question is uh, first uh, actually uh, when you are doing the farm d program how you got this instinct of uh, doing a research is there a, uh, it, is it started at that stage or after completing only you got an idea of uh, uh, joining phd no sir i have started uh, i got the idea that i should do phd right back in my third and fourth year itself sir uh, my interest towards research started way back in my second year Uh, when me and my friend uh, Dr. Anandi Chaudhary, both of us attended a conference at uh, Naipur, Hyderabad. So we went over there. We saw the poster presentation. We saw the oral presentation. So we were uh, very young. We didn't know what it is all about. So after attending that conference, uh, both of us uh, came back to our university and we went and met uh, Vijayanandi, my guide now. Uh, we spoke with her uh, what we should do. Uh, what what are all those uh, presentation? What is it? So when uh, then, ma'am told us about the research aspects. Uh, what i can do as a uh, paper for a presentation uh, everything uh, later on we learned through through that and uh, continue doing yeah so the yes. first exposure is very very important it seems that yes, only sir. made you to uh, come as a researcher am i correct yes, so sir. first you are seeing a poster and uh, it is creating some sort of impact on you so yes, if sir. you are not going or and, and attending that uh, conference i think that you may not be uh, coming out as a researcher and induction of a spark yes. a spark is enlightened on the uh, part when you are going for an, a conference so it is very important that every scholar every researcher every student should go for certain conferences and uh, other scientific meetings so that it will give some ideas it will initiate uh, uh, it will put the seed for research so that is what i get from praveen next praveen uh, when you are uh, joining this phd whether you uh, got some scholarships or uh, you are uh, uh, spending on your own for doing research so right now i have my oh. right now i have the fellowship from our university so i have got a wales research fellowship right now and i am doing it on, on that so uh, through that uh, with so, the help of that i am planning out my research so, okay you are you are getting a fellowship that is uh, supporting your uh, financially or it is supporting you for doing the research very good and uh, uh, what about uh, the uh, uh, research aspects of your uh, phd what type of uh, work you are carrying out in a, in a brief way can you say so, uh, but uh, shortly outline of the thing sir my ba basic research in phd is to understand about uh, micronutrients deficiency in uh, metabolic syndromes so various metabolic syndromes and what are the uh, micronutrient deficiency that will uh, arise and uh, how the supplementation will uh, have an effect on this and what are uh, how this micronutrient levels uh, will predict the future outcomes of the particular disease oh, excellent you are planning with a, a very important topic so let me know uh, what is the first publication how you started first publishing Well, what is your first paper? How it started? So first paper, uh, I, I wrote a paper for a conference for presenting at a, for presenting poster presentation at Mother Teresa Research Institute at Pondicherry. So for uh, presenting my poster over there, I wrote my first paper, and that paper got published in by the sponsor of that conference itself. So it is not a Scopus Index journal, although, but that was my first ever paper, and. Uh, that was the hardest ever paper that i have written it, it took me so long that was a narrative review on a combination drug therapy in a specific type of cancer but that paper took me so long to complete it 
but uh, only because of that paper uh, i feel uh, it is quite easy these days that i could able to write i could able to use the resources that are available to write the paper so everything is because of that yes so, rightly said so rightly said that is the first step is very very important uh, we should have a confidence that we are capable of doing it we can do it and we should start the work many researchers uh, are lagging in that uh, aspect uh, even though they know how to write and uh, uh, how to prepare an article still they are uh, uh, keeping it aside and uh, doing other works without communicating them to the journal office so uh, unless we try this is just like uh, throwing a stone to the mango sometimes uh, the paper may be rejected but we should take the comments of the uh, reviewers and we should correct it and then we should we can resend it but instead of that if you are keeping it in your own table it is not going to help anybody your research will not be exposed to others so you always keep in mind that every work you carry out should be communicated to a journal or it should be presented in a conference that should be a, a instinct that every research scholar should have okay pravin now what sort of uh, uh, hurdles that you come across when you are uh, communicating papers in uh, your uh, uh, farm d level in farm d level sir uh yeah. we did uh, we don't have enough uh, pub uh, publishers in I india towards pharmacy practice sir, back in those days now we have so many uh, specific journals uh, those days uh, we don't have enough specific journals then uh, there will be uh, article rejections are possible uh, which are quite uh, possible then uh, initially i felt uh, difficult with biostatistics sir. so as uh, till i learned uh, basic level in my biostatistics i felt uh, difficult even though we have uh, so many software available to do biostatistics but uh, the knowledge to set up a hypothesis the knowledge to uh, use a particular test whether to use a parametric test non parametric test what kind of non parametric test for that particular hypothesis so that way i felt a, li a little difficult in my initial stages but later on after learning uh, something about biostatistics and all uh, it turned out to be quite easy to do these days yes actually biostatistics is an important part of the pharmacy practice uh, articles because uh, unless and otherwise uh, you do proper statistics your uh, findings will not be even uh, accepted by the scientific community so in that aspect uh, performing a statistical uh, calculations and uh, justifying your reports are very very important and uh, it's uh, very nice to hear from you that uh, you uh, keep on familiarizing with uh, publications is it or not so yes, sir, sir. Uh, for further uh, details i uh, will move over to dr shanmu sundaram he may be asking about the progress and how you could able to master this process actually you will become uh, with the 50 articles more than 50 articles in a earlier age itself uh, we can understand you might have mastered in that area so uh, dr shanmu sundaram will uh, throw more light on those, those aspect with you actually to uh, educate the viewers on the current trend of publications because nowadays in those days before when myself and dr satish was uh, in our research uh, phd and uh, college days there was no uh, idea about scopus and other things because scopus was started only in the year 2004 by elsevier and uh, then only it has got uh, familiarized and everyone started talking about scopus index and index journals and the peer reviewed all these terminologies you can hear only from 2004 onwards before that publication is a publication and impact factor everyone will be thinking if you do a big research only you can do a impact factor per publication and if you do a, if you everyone will accept your public uh, that you are publishing an impact factor means you publish in nature or science that type of journals because nature journal is having impact factor of 40 and science journal is having nearly 27 or 28 if you are good researcher you don't say oh you are publish in nature but so that and all is uh, anyone's a dream actually to publish in nature science and that type of journals but before 2004 no one knows about all the scopus and impact factor journals but after 2004 once scopus has come into light and everyone is talking because scopus deals with the quality of publication not only the quantity of publication quality of publications and nowadays uh, everyone is more cared about the plagiarism because no, uh, ugc is not accepting even the self citations and self uh, writings they say uh, all those things also will be considered self plagiarism also will be counted and uh, nowadays they made it mandatory either by uh, turnitin software or any open software the 
percentage of plagiarism should be below 10 percent then only a research scholar can submit this thesis so this is how uh, nowadays because young researchers who is viewing this they should have an idea that they should start publishing only in uh, index journals that to start minimum a scopus index journal or uh, to get practice they can go with the google scholar index then one or two publication after that they can go for scopus index then they can go for uh, simultaneously they can also try some ugc scat journals then they can go for web of science that is will be having a lot of impact factor because scopus index they may have impact factor or they may not have impact factor so web of science will be with the most of impact factor because they are science citation index in web of science also we will be having two aspects one is uh, science citation index and emerging science citation index so emerging science will be not having a uh, impact factor only the science citation will be impact factor so nowadays ugc what they say is you have to publish only in journals with UGC SCAR uh, minimum and uh, a Scopus index with impact factors. All this will be carried out. If you are an academician, it will be counted for your promotions and other things. So, whoever is present nowadays uh, publishing, take care of all these aspects to get trained. You can go for Google Scholar and other indexing. So, this is how we actually practice in Wales because of my uh, B farm students, M farm students, farm D, and research scholars, faculty, everyone. They go for minimum uh, Google Scholar, then for uh, Scopus Index. And uh, because in NIR ranking also, that was one of the factors where we scored a good score, by which in last two to three days back, when the Ministry of MHRD has released the NIR ranking for Wales, we are in pharmacy. And throughout India, we have come out with the 43rd rank. So in top 50 institutions, research was one of the prime factor to achieve that feat. So what I say to the viewers is, Young researchers, not only studying is important, we should focus on academics as well as research simultaneously. You should learn this from your undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And don't stop with your undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. Go for your research degree, uh, either uh, PhD. After PhD, also many can try for postdoctoral fellowships and other scholarships. So life is a journey where you can keep on studying in different areas and you can improve yourself self because Nowadays, PhD is available both full-time and part-time, but we have already told what is the benefits of full-time and part-time in uh, earlier episodes. So now let's continue with the uh, province journey. So about uh, this first uh, award, that is big award, that is PGIBMS award, he has uh, motivated him because I was uh, present, not as a guide, as a, um, one of his mentor, I was present because it, the paper was uh, guided by his uh, guide, Dr. Vijayanti. And he has presented in the Pondicherry IABMS conference, I remember. And he has defended the paper very well. And because the paper has to be initially selected first, then it has to be defended on flat floor with the platform. And then uh, we had to face the audience question at the young age. And he has come out with the first uh, big uh, award that is PGIBMS. That is yeah, how he was preparing himself for that award. How, him, he, uh, how Dr. Praveen and his guide was preparing him for that one. So I remember uh, my PJBMS award was uh, during the year 2015. Uh, I prepared my initial document uh, and we submitted uh, during the month of August. Uh, the conference was supposed to be on December, uh, in December 3rd or 4th week. Uh, but that was the year where we had this uh, Chennai floods. So your university was closed. Uh, I'm unable to meet ma'am, but uh, ma'am was so supportive. Uh, she uh, We communicated through... Uh, through mail, uh, I, I will uh, daily prepare my PPT, send it to her. She will uh, tell me all the corrections that I, have, I should do. Then again, I will do the correction. I will send it to her. Everything I did and uh, had to practice uh, at my home. So later on, I went uh, came over to Pondicherry uh, for presentation. I, I guess it is on uh, December last week uh, in 2015. Uh, so I, I went there and uh, to my shock, I was the first presenter for that award. Uh, I was informed uh, uh, just uh, five minutes before my presentation that I'm going to be presenting uh, first for that award. Later on, uh, there will be other participants. So I presented uh, the stipulated time for that uh, presentation is eight minutes. I presented and I had to face uh, questions for around 20 to 25 minutes from judges as well as audience. Uh, that was one of the hugest crowds that I have seen for uh, all my presentation. More than 1,000 people have been there in that auditorium. Then uh, after presenting, the competition was also tough because uh, I was the only one who was doing PG back then. I was in my family with them. All my competitors were uh, research scholars from uh, different different institutes of India. So that uh, competition was uh, very much tough. As soon as I finished and uh, 
I, I, it took me some time to actually uh, understand that I have received that award. Uh, that was, uh, uh, I mean, it, it was so uh, very well won out when compared to all the others that I won. Here also I could see some similarity because I was a first participant when I presented my PGIPMS award in, uh, uh, I think it was in 2003. Uh, I presented it in uh, Presidency College, the same conference, the Presidency College. And I was the first presenter to present that. But, but uh, I was not nervous, but I presented and came down. After presenting only, after seeing the other participants' presentation only, I got nervous. Because uh, being, a first presenter, being a first, first presenter, we will have a comfort zone to present and come down after, but yes, we can, when you see the second and third participant, when they keep on going for a presentation, then we will be judging ourselves whether we have presented correctly or not. And to my um, uh, competitor, ne there are nearly a lot of competitors there, but the second presenter itself actually stunned me. He, he was an anatomy student, a medical anatomy student, and he brought 100 skulls. Live under cells and he started presenting both uh, PPT as well as uh, he was explaining live with the uh, under skull what he was, he was studying the grooves in the brain actually. So, for skull, so all those things he was uh, explaining. I was shocked by seeing that type of particular presentation. But still, uh, always uh, being in a competition and uh, first we had to believe ourselves that is the most important thing. We had to give our best and wait for the result. Hope we both have done the same and we have got the result being the first presenter. So now it's uh, time. I think it's time for the viewers to have a live uh, search strategy to explain what is uh, how to go select uh, Scopus Journal and uh, other things. Now it's over to Praveen to share his screen so that he'll be explaining to the viewers how it is done so the viewers can get benefited out of it. Hi everyone, uh, now we will see about uh, some of the key aspects while writing a paper publication. The first, this is the page of a, a journal, this is the author instruction page of a journal. The first thing you should note about any, uh, any article that you are writing is the title. Always make sure that your title is simple and it is to the point. Uh, do not uh, deviate from your main uh, outcome of your work. Have a, a simple title. Don't use various acronyms, don't use different jargons in your title, so have it simple. As soon as you finish your title, go for writing the body of the manuscript. Don't write abstract as soon as you complete your title. So after you, in the body of the manuscript for uh, research papers uh, or the systematic reviews or meta-analysis, we will follow a scheme called MRAD scheme, Introduction, Methodology, Results and Discussion. So you can follow that pattern to write the uh, manuscript body. After completing the body of the manuscript, you can write your abstract. So the abstract is the uh, think that a uh, reviewer as well as editor first reads in your paper. So you must be very careful while writing the abstract. Certain journals will have a certain abstract format. For example, this journal uh, includes uh, both structured as well as non-structured abstract. Uh, certain journals will include only structured abstracts. So there will be word limits, etc. You should have an idea about uh, uh, writing the abstract. Then the next important thing and the most important thing is keywords. Keywords are something that gives you the visibility of your work. Once your paper gets published, it's, it is depending upon the keywords that your paper can be viewed by other researchers. So always choose keywords from something called medical subject headings. Uh, you can see this is the medical subject headings uh, website. Uh, it is a PubMed uh, based website. This is the me medical subject heading website. This is like a thesaurus or dictionary type website for uh, biomedical sciences as well as life sciences. So here, uh, you can give your topic, the topic you, can, you are interested in. For example, I have written vomiting in pregnancy. So the suitable keyword for me will be hyperemesis gravidarum. So you can try different, different topic and you can uh, get the suitable uh, keyword that you can use. For example, I have chosen uh, hand washing. The appropriate keyword here will be hand disinfection. So choosing a keyword is the most important thing because Every researcher, while searching in PubMed, they will use only the medical subject headings to find the literatures for their uh, research. So make sure that you always choose a keyword from medical subject heading. The next and the most important thing about a research publication is the references. While you write the references, uh, you have the various software these days, uh, such as Zotero, Mendeley, etc., to track your references. But every journal will have a specific journal. Has a style called rank or style. 
some journals will have mla style some will have uh, apa style some will have harvard style you have to go through the author instruction uh, top to bottom to understand what style of references that you will use in your paper so these are some of the things that you should have in your mind while preparing a manuscript so once you submit a manuscript what will happen is uh, it will go to the editor the editor will initially review the paper the editor can very well reject your paper uh, as uh, sati sir said uh, you can submit at 5 pm you it will reach your uh, uh, the editor by 51 the editor can reject your paper by 53 itself uh, provided your paper must have certain uh, criteria that it should follow there are four important things that you should have in your mind while uh, submitting a paper for uh, publication the first thing you should have in your mind is plagiarism make sure as sir said make sure your plagiarism content is less than 10 percentage uh, always cite the sources from which you have adapted always try writing uh, your manuscript in a different way in a new way so that you will get a lesser plagiarism content the second thing is always follow the author instructions for example this is an author instruction of a journal 100% adhere to the author instruction of the journal uh, they have given a font size follow that font size if they have given uh, some content to be in bold font uh, make that content to be in bold font if you 100% adhere to the author instructions and the third thing is you should have a novel concept a novel concept is the thing that will get your paper published a well known concept if you are uh, uh, if you are submitting again and again uh, no editor will be ready to publish you should either have a novel idea or a novel methodology to prove that idea something should be novel in your uh, publication the fourth and the final thing is that your manuscript must match the scope of the journal for example i have chosen one of the pubmed index journal here you can see this journal publishes only the manuscripts with in vitro studies or animal studies preclinical studies of tropical diseases so every journal will have certain uh, specific scope make sure that you submit a paper with that particular scope of the journal you always check with the scope of the journal so all following these four things like avoiding plagiarism uh, adhering to the author instructions adhering to the scope of the journal and uh, having a novel concept will get your article through the editorial phase once your article goes to the editorial phase it will go to the reviewer phase so if your article reaches reviewer phase we cannot do anything we have to wait for the reviewer comments a reviewer can either accept your publication can reject can give uh, revisions to your publication even if a reviewer rejects your journal you will have a reviewer comments you will have a feedback first hand feedback of your uh, work so you can either incorporate those uh, feedback in your work if you find it is suitable it will boost your uh, uh, paper you can incorporate all those things in your paper and then you can submit it to a next journal so these are some of the important things that you should have in your mind before uh, submitting the paper for publication the next thing is how do you choose a journal for publication so this is one of the most important thing as both sources we are discussing about uh, publication in index journal so the first thing that you should have in your mind is as a starter as a researcher you should always start with scopus scopus should be your first uh, criteria uh, following scopus you can go for web of sciences in web of sciences we have both uh, emerging source citation index and science citation index expanded the science citation index expanded is the pinnacle for any researcher to have a paper published in it when you are in science citation index uh, publication league you have to think about the impact factor we can talk about this later right now we, uh, this is the scopus home page here you can see two different thing one is the author search the other thing is sources you have to select these sources here you will have a list of journals for example there are 41154 results here so the first thing you should do as a researcher to find out the selected journal is you have to download this scopus sources list we have a option for downloading once you download it you will get an excel sheet you can see this excel sheet has almost every journal every journal that is indexed in scopus here i have used some of the filters to to include only the journal that are uh, that are uh, of pharmacology and pharmaceutical sciences and make sure that you choose only the active journals so here you can choose the journal depending upon uh, depending upon your research you can choose any of these journal depending upon your research whether you are doing it in a clinical pharmacy or in a hospital pharmacy or pharmacokinetics we have various uh, journals pertaining to your research so after selecting this the, you should check this in the website also the reason being is this uh, scopus sources list this excel spreadsheet is published only few times a year so you have to check these things in the website also for example i am checking the uh, clinical pharmacokinetics journal 
once you check this journal you will get uh, various uh, results so you can uh, select a particular journal here you can read about the journals coverage here their publisher etc so always select a journal who has which has its publication year to present so pre uh, the, these journals are the journals that are currently indexed in scopus you can also cross check it here also in scopus concerned coverage whether there are publications of 2020 then you can submit a paper in this journal so always choose a scopus index journal being a researcher in india you have to adhere to the guidelines uh, given by university grants commission they have given a specific list called ugc care list so there are two different list uh, of uh, journal journals that are published in india so here in ugc you can search over here or you can uh, check it in the both the list so ugc has given uh, two different list the first list is uh, the journals that are being selected uh, by ugc directly the second list is the second list here is uh, the journals that are uh, being uh, extracted from web of sciences and scopus recently the ugc care list has removed certain journals from scopus from its criteria so these are some of the journals that are removed from the ugc care list some of the scopus index journals that are removed from the ugc care list so always make sure that your paper is in both scopus index as well as in ugc care list also these are the first thing that you should know for your initial publications so when you go in publications you can uh, try at uh, web of sciences basically web of sciences have four different code collection uh, one is emerging source of citation index the esci which is the basic level in web of sciences then there are arts and science humanity citation index social sciences citation index and science citation index expanded these uh, social science citation index and arts and humanities are concerned to that particular field for biomedical science researchers and life science researcher these two are the most important thing the emerging source of citation index and uh, science citation index expanded so we can you can download the list from emerging source of citation index you have a list of various journals that are included in emerging source of citation index the difference between the emerging source of citation index and yes science citation index expanded is when a journal publisher wants to index his journal in uh, web of sciences initially the if the journal is uh, having certain basic qualities they are included in emerging source of citation index so if the journal maintains the same quality throughout the stipulated period then they are upgraded to science citation index expanded this science citation index expanded is the pinnacle of any publication always uh, higher impact publications or uh, belong to science citation index expanded publication so this web of sciences provides you an other op opportunity also you can match your own manuscript you can find uh, suitable journals for your own manuscript here i have given a published work of ours uh, i have given the title and abstract uh, in the manuscript matcher so i have got 38 journal results so i have 38 various journals of web of sciences this is the web of sciences master journal list i have got 38 various journals here you can see the journals uh, core collection its issn you can view its uh, profile page etc so this can, this you can use for identifying a, a suitable journal for your publication when you have done a quality research or you have written a quality uh, paper on other on meta analysis or systematic review you can uh, use these uh, softwares to find out the suitable journal similar to web of sciences some of the publishers like uh, elsevier uh, wiley online uh, publishers uh, mdpa springer taylor francis Uh, etc they have their own uh, journal finders you can also try in that the next thing you should always keep in your mind is the journal citation reports uh, we were talking about impact factor impact factor is being uh, this is given by various agencies but the global research community will always depend upon journal citation reports here for example i have uh, chosen a journal in which we have recently published a manuscript uh, this is international journal of antimicrobial agents i have uh, just given search of the journal in the master journalist here i have found the uh, information about the journal right from the year it has published number of issues it have etc whether it is in sca or esca all the details it will give when you come down here is the most important thing this is called journal metrics in journal metrics this metrics are derived from journal citation reports journal citation reports are the gold standard for any researcher for example the impact factor of this particular journal is 4.615 which is given by journal citation reports 
So when you choose a journal for quality publication, quality research, always make sure that uh, you choose uh, from the impact factor depending on journal citation report. Certain uh, journals will have their own uh, impact factor ages. There are some other uh, impact factor uh, uh, agencies that give impact factor, but the global research community will always depend upon the JCR report. So make sure that uh, your paper is in a JCR index journal. There are something uh, that you should have in mind. So when your paper gets published, the next thing is as a researcher, you should maintain an academic and research profile to keep your paper, uh, to track your citation, uh, to track uh, about uh, how you have done uh, research, etc. For example, this is my Google Scholar profile. Google Scholar is the basic place where you can uh, have track all your publications. These are all the list of publications that I have had. So you can have all the list of publications in uh, Google Scholar. Here you will have citation metrics, the uh, uh, indexing uh, detail, uh, citation metrics, and these are all the citations that I have received uh, journal-wise. So here you can track about the citations, uh, your article metrics in Google Scholar. Google Scholar is the basic thing. Any published work will get uh, updated in Google Scholar, provided uh, you have one month time between the date of publication and the updation in uh, Google Scholar. The next thing is Scopus. Scopus, like I said, in author search, you can search for your profile. Then Scopus also has a, a different, different uh, profile ideas. So uh, Scopus also includes uh, your publication, tracks your publication, tracks your citation, tracks your h-index. So Scopus, uh, all your papers that are published in Scopus Index Journal will automatically get updated into Scopus Preview. Uh, provided you give it a uh, four weeks time from the date of publication. There are uh, several other uh, uh, pro portals to uh, maintain your academic profile, like ResearchGate is there, you have Researcher ID by Web of Sciences, you have ORCID, you have, you have ORCID, you have Mendeley, you have uh, Academia, etc. Always try and maintain your academic profile. This will give you a wide coverage and wide visibility among the various researchers. So these are some of the few things that I wanted to uh, share with you all uh, through this uh, uh, web uh, Facebook Live. So I'll, I will get back to excellent. You are uh, explained uh, uh, very nicely all those aspects of publication, starting from uh, preparing a manuscript, uh, what should be the structure of the manuscript, how an abstract should be, what the keywords should be, and uh, what are the reasons for generally for uh, rejection of an outright rejection from a journal. Uh, mainly, uh, the outright rejection means mostly it will not match the scope. That is what you uh, uh, impressed upon the audience also. So uh, that uh, that you should not worry. You should find a suitable journal. That's the way we have to move further forward. And uh, you also clearly told uh, how to find out uh, the uh, journals from Scopus, whether it is uh, in the index in the Scopus uh, or uh, whatever it may be. Uh, UGC care list. That is also an important thing that we have to uh, think today because uh, the size uh, SCI index journals are listed there. And uh, when you are going for a promotion or uh, any other academic aspects, the the UGC is very much uh, worried about whether the uh, journal is uh, indexed in UGC care list or not. So you can also find those things. You told those things very clearly. And now uh, I like to uh, uh, hear from you. After publishing so many papers, what is the very toughest area in the first paper? And how it is now after uh, the tougher, is how we are feeling in that particular area. Uh, the toughest area for uh, any researcher is to satisfy the reviewers, sir. Uh, they come and they give uh, the revisions that we have to uh, give them along with the proper responses. That, that was initially tough, as well as I told, biostatistics was tough initially. So, learning both biostatistics and uh, after uh, having uh, some publication experience, now I feel it is a little easy to uh, interact with the editor as well as the reviewer uh, while we are submitting the revisions. Uh, we can stress upon our own point. We cannot uh, always agree to all these suggestions of reviewers. We, can, we have our own uh, concept also. So to explain it, uh, it is now easy. Initially, it felt a little difficult. Yes, uh, Praveen, as you told, there is always a chance for the author for rebuttals also. If you are yes. uh, not uh, convinced with the uh, reviewer comment, you can also write an uh, 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 argument or you can raise an argument if you feel that and you confirm that your point is correct. Uh, that possibility is always there for most of the journals. 
and no need to worry for that and uh, one more thing uh, i wish to hear from you is uh, uh, what is your uh, further uh, proposed idea what is your perspective uh, after completion of uh, phd because so so my, you want to continue as a researcher or you want to become an academician or what is your perspective in your uh, life to become my passion is always to be an academician sir being an academician also we can do quality research there are wide scope to do quality research as an academician so i have seen people in our university itself doing uh, very good research so uh, my aim is to be, have an academic career uh, doing quality research that is my basic aim over to from thank you yeah thank you pravin it was a really a nice presentation for the viewers because uh, Many may not be knowing how to select a proper journal nowadays. Uh, selecting a Google Scholar or Scopus or something like that, we have covered all those areas in nearly 15 minutes of time, and it will be very useful for the users. Here, I want to add a point to the viewers: is that currently many are, many will be using and uh, accommodated to Microsoft Office and Word. MS, everyone, if you want to type, you will be going only for MS Word. So, but uh, my suggestion when you write a research paper in the current concept is. Uh, you can uh, use google docs why because simultaneously you can share your uh, manuscript or uh, preparing paper with your mentor or your guide so that so how we are progressing the same thing it can be reviewed by the guide so because um, in my MS word we have to prepare the full manuscript all the 10 pages then you have to submit to the guide and then guide has to correct so the guide will be uh, because they may be busy in doing all those corrections and later so you may not be getting a rapport with the guide. But what I have seen is you can use a Google Docs so where simultaneously the guide and student uh, can uh, prepare the papers uh, simultaneously so that uh, the paper will be uh, prepared easily. That is one of the things. And one more, uh, actually, Google Docs has a lot of add-on features. As you said, the Zotero, Mendeley, everything. And that can be added as an add-on feature. And one more feature is also the paper file. So a lot of add-on are there which is for especially bibliographic purposes citations and for references because each journal one will go for Harvard style one will go for uh, Vancouver style one will be with the UK style so it is confusing for the young researchers to follow which style so all these uh, add-on apps what they do is if you fix one style and whatever you type they convert it to that particular style and uh, you can easily incorporate and you need to because uh, you go for a, a systematic review or narrative review or a research publication Nearly, you will need to type 50 to 60 references at first. So that is a very tough task because mostly, when you are not, as you said in the author instructions, when you not compile to the author instruction, first area immediately the researcher will send us. You are not uh, the reference area is not correct. So reference is not. Uh, you have followed this type of referencing, and uh, we'll put number of references. Number of five reference is not correct. Number ten is not correct. Number twelve is not correct. But now, by using all these apps like Mendeley, Zotero, and many are free actually. So that too, in the Google Docs uh, itself, it's an add-on feature. Whenever you do this, what happens is if you type what if you fix one style and start typing it, automatically all your 50 references will be done. And similarly, the additional uh, option is if you don't have a proper uh, site uh, page number or an index or uh, whatever you call the issue volume number of a journal. Online itself, using those apps, you can search that particular journal and get the correct reference. It will be incorporated automatically into the version. That is also one of the things out there because automatic searching and those apps will uh, give us the correct uh, data instead of what we are doing it. And uh, the guide also can, before also, you can uh, check because what these apps are doing is after if you type the manuscript in Google Docs or 50 references or something, each reference, if you keep at the end, if you keep the mouse, it will show it is in Mango style or not, or Albert style or not, by which we can recheck before submitting the thing. And any uh, student or uh, researcher who is submitting a paper, you have to check the author guidelines or checklist of that particular journal because they need not think they may have communicated earlier to some journal and they may be communicating simultaneously with other journals. But what happens is that what they do is they, they should not check have the checklist of A journal to the B because A journal will have a different checklist and B journal will have a different checklist. Similarly, some journal will have a surname first, some journals will have a first name first. All those things will be uh, there for the uh, thing. All these things uh, researchers should take care. And one more thing in Google Docs for the uh, 
guides who are doing it because why i am specifying that is for correcting the because of guides they can use a, a add on feature called as kaizena k i z e n a what this kaizena is going to do is you can do do a live comment actually normally in uh, ms office and other uh, in google docs also the guides are who is correcting your manuscript or they can comment they can mark the highlight at particular point and they can uh, comment on the comment box but the student may not be understanding what the comment is made by the guide or uh, comment is made by the uh, mentor but what this kaizena does is kaizena is, can be operated in three modes one is uh, we can uh, do it as a normal comment as usual what we do for the uh, ms office or google docs the second one the guide can speak directly about that particular point i i am expecting so and so and you have made this uh, mistakes to correct you can they can record a voice comment that is a uh, add on uh, feature is there so the student can clearly understand what the guide wants what type of correction the guide is expecting from the student as uh, a scholar and the third thing is a video comment St still if the student is not able to understand by the voice comment the student can uh, the teacher can go for a video comment with particular stickers or emojis which represents what it is i think but that the video comment and emoji feature is not available on a free basis maybe on a paid uh, subscription but for educators they give a lot of uh, add on features to be on a um, free basis but the first two that is uh, one is with the voice comment as well as with the normal comment is free and the video comment i am not sure whether it's free or uh, not free so all these if the this is both for the researchers as well as for the guides who are correcting the manuscripts because simultaneously the screen sharing or the, the article sharing can be done and it can be if you guide and the students sit on a single day and they start preparing a manuscript they can prepare two to three pages without the thing and when you do like this what happens is the plagiarism and other things are getting minimized so that easily your point your way of getting your papers published and accepted the acceptance range because nowadays everything minimum becomes the scopus index or a impact factor journal so because when we need because all these journals take for reviewing on minimum 3 months or 4 months to till the decision whether it is article is suitable or not so in so after 3 months of getting a rejection it will be a very wounding for the researcher so if we avoid all this uh, we can do it and for the students who are in undergraduate and postgraduate because uh, the nowadays many universities are giving marks for publication when they go for the projects not only for project submission and marks so they need to go for a minimum review article and so on so they can what they can do is they can uh, start because reviewing a particular before starting a research work review of a particular work is more important they should do a proper research review then they start the research and and they if you publish a review article also in the particular topic also they will be very clear enough how to proceed with the research these are the comments we like to share on this particular platform with praveen and uh, dr satish so anyhow it's a very good uh, evening and very good presentation and it's a very lively concept so in future also we was going to see this video kindly see it uh, after 40 minutes definitely because it is going to have a live uh, presentation of how to search how to because before 40 minutes also important but uh, we are talking about our own journeys but after 40 minutes it was purely for the research oriented and research uh, presentations so to over to dr sadeep and praveen to sign off this particular episode and uh, once again i want to rem remind the viewers that uh, this video will be shortly available in the nigits edu plus channel so that you can view multiple times and you can see any uh, doubt and clarifications and you can always communicate with us with uh, any three of us to learn if you have any doubts because in one hour session we cannot uh, cover everything so if you have any doubts my own students or my university students or any viewers in the facebook or in public who is viewing this you can contact us so that is the idea of this particular show so next week we are going to have a concept on regulatory affairs so we have a beautiful guest who is also earning a multiple degree on that so multiple degree in uh, in pharmacy beyond pharmacy and he also has a management degree so like that the, we have a guest so keep guessing so the now over to dr satish for the concluding remarks ah uh, thank you dr shumuthara and uh, uh, what uh, we had uh, what is the essence of this today's episode you understood uh, that uh, i had experienced uh, for sending a paper lot of difficulties there that is typing a 
paper type setting a paper itself is a very difficult uh, for us before 20 years because uh, there won't be one computer in a particular city or uh, in a town and uh, we have to wait for days together to get uh, uh, typeset a paper and then communicate to the journal but nowadays everyone is having a laptop and moreover uh, we are also having uh, uh, other devices where we could able to typeset our own papers in the style what we require similarly uh, we also have the technology like internet in olden days if you want to go for an uh, uh, there is a, a literature survey uh, we, we depend on medline medline provides uh, compact disks this compact disk can be uh, purchased for for a huge money and only big research centers will uh, can afford it so that uh, when we want to search on some topics we have to go there and find out uh, whether uh, what is the status of that particular topic then sometimes uh, if uh, what we are planning is already done we have to change the change our work plan of work so in the in the current scenario it is not like that that all things are in our fingertips if you put in google or in uh, publons or uh, uh, go for uh, any uh, search online search devices you can uh, search uh, uh, formats you can get and uh, complete structure of the uh, work what that has been covered so all these indicate that you have had the technology had brought us very close and sped up and accelerated the process of research so even uh, communicating with the uh, journal office it took uh, 15 days but now it is within fraction of seconds we can be able to communicate with the journal office and the reply we are getting early all these and our, we should understand that we are with the research had been accelerated so much the time consumption for uh, every steps has been uh, reduced to a greater extent so the researchers the present researchers should understand this and utilize this technology as uh, Dr. Shimofunam also pointed out, there are so many uh, tools, add-on tools for making your paper more refined before sending itself. We can match the quality of the uh, expectations of the uh, journal office. So to that extent, the technology is available now. So the young researchers should utilize these technologies in a positive manner and publish their works. That's my uh, message for the day. And, uh, uh, Thank you for Praveen with us. In spite of uh, so much difficulties, you might have uh, uh, come across uh, and uh, joined with us today for explaining the uh, full process. Thank you for that. And uh, with a new episode, again, we will meet you. Uh, and already a clue has been uh, thrown to you uh, who will be the next episode's guest. So uh, until you catch, uh, until we catch you on the next week, we are signing out. Bye. So I think Praveen has a question in his mind. He wanted to ask a closing question to the duo. Yes, <laughs> I have a question to ask to both of you. Uh, since both of you have uh, around 20 years of research experience and uh, 10 plus years of uh, guiding uh, students towards research, what are the qualities that you uh, expect in a student who approaches you to, uh, to do his or her research? So my point of view, first the student should uh, have a research mind to do original research so and uh, and you should think that any guide or mentor they will be a facilitator for doing his research because if you do his own research only you can get trained and he can do further uh, take it forward to any level of his in his career if he thinks that the guide should do everything for him and he will be providing the data and other things that will not be a good research because nowadays the younger minds are thinking that the mentor will take care of 50% and 50% will be taken care of the research. Mentor will, mentor will take care of nothing. They will be a facilitator at every stage. 100% they will be a facilitator at every stage. From the scratch till the end, it is the work of the researcher. And researcher should be training because they are given the designation as a research guide or a supervisor. Because supervisor, research supervisor means they are going to supervise the research. And they are not going to do the research and will guide the students in all the aspects of that particular thing and when they approach they should have a mind setup of either specific titles or specific area at least whether the pharmacology or suitics which area want to they go or if they don't have a clear idea on that aspect at least they should uh, take over the idea of the guides and they should proceed to research. this is how i select my students or whoever students approach with me i'll train them in such a manner and facilitate in a such a manner that they 
do a proper research. So far, my all my research to students have completed uh, in full time, sorry, in part time at uh, three and a half years and submitted a thesis. So this is how we communicate and do. Now it's to Satish to answer the same question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my answer will be also the same. The first point will be the interest of the candidate. There is no doubt. Uh, in addition to that, uh, what we can uh, think is, uh, I expect a positive attitude from the researcher. When uh, I, we are doing research, every results, every data will not be always positive. There may be some negative results we will get. At that, time, at that uh, point of uh, time, the researcher should not get depressed. So I basically think that the researcher should have a positive attitude. Strong positive attitude will help him to move forward. Even though negative results come, sometimes the uh, plan may not work out. So immediately he should have a mind, mental attitude to change his uh, 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 plan and move forward. In, immediately if he depresses or she depresses, then we cannot move ahead. We will be uh, totally collapsed. So it should not be the case. The, the researcher should have a positive attitude and uh, she should, he or she should think that uh, we can do that. That is the basic thing. And uh, you should, or she should have also a, uh, a social thinking. Whatever the work, what we are carrying out, should be helpful for the society. Uh, other two things, in addition to the intro, that's the basic thing uh, that any research guide uh, will uh, definitely think of. Over it. And in addition to that, the positive attitude and uh, thought towards the society, the inventions or research, what he or she is doing, should help the society in some way or like that. So uh, these two thoughts, in addition to that, I expect. So actually, it was a very good episode on research, pharma research and career guidance on career opportunities in research, how to take forward the research. So pharma, do your signing off for tonight and let us meet next week. All of you catch us live again on next week with the regulatory affairs episode. Good night. Bye bye. See you. Bye.